2 uh, Kings chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading in verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 8, the Bible says, And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shuam. And there was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this man, that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make him a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us, he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber, and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shumanite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto her, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is it to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken to of the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. And he said, What then is it to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you. God, we pray this morning that our worship would be worthy and that we would be found in a, in a sense of worship to lift up your name. God, we pray that you would bless your word to the hearts of the hearers. Make it a living word, Lord, that you would revive us as your people and that you would draw the lost to you. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, I'll be preaching this morning on things that are well. Uh, things that are good and things that are bad and things that are smooth. Uh, and no doubt every one of us want it to be well. Now, that's a desire of the flesh, but it ought to be a spiritual desire that it would be well with our souls. Uh, and when we think of well for our soul, we immediately think of redemption and salvation and being born again. And certainly that is a well spot for your soul. But my question to you, and the reality of it is, I've been saved for over 40 years and it's not always been well with my soul. I've been cold. I've been indifferent to the things of God. I've been hard to the Word of God. And, and, and just plain discouraged in the things of God. And I believe if we all be honest, we found ourselves self there at many different times in our life. And uh, a lot of it, sadly, is this. It depends on our condition here on the world. And I think that is something that we've got to set aside if we're going to be well in the Spirit. Remember what the Lord Jesus said to Nicodemus? He said, that which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. So we find that in addition that our need for redemption, that they're two separate realms. In other words, we can be eat up with cancer and say it's well. Uh, we, we can have the most dire circumstances in finances, having to give up your own home and live with somebody else, and still say it is well. Now, society, and especially American society, has told us that that's an impossibility. If you don't have a three-bedroom brick, something's wrong with you. But that is not the case spiritually. Don't buy into that ever, because what really matters is the inward man and how well or how, uh, how close unto the Lord he is. 
Now back to our text in verse 8. The Bible says, And it fell on the day that Elisha passed to Shuman, and there was a great woman. Now, when this describes as a great woman, I don't know if she was uh, uh, successful. I don't know if she was like Lydia, the seller of purple, and successful financially. I don't, I don't really know. I don't know if she was high in society. I don't know if she was knowledgeable of the scripture that existed in that day. But whatever was said was that she was a great woman. Now, I have to believe, at least in part, that that means she was stable. You know, we, we live in a day and age today where people are here, there, and yonder. Uh, they're not stable spiritually. They're not stable socially. Uh, they believe one thing one day, and they believe something else the next day. And I believe this great woman was stable in her beliefs. I believe in a minute we'll see from the Word of God that she was spiritually in tune with the Lord God. That's a wonderful attribute in the day which we live today. If you want to be stable, if you want to be the individual to say it's well, you have to be in tune with the Lord. And just because you're regularly attending church does not mean that you're in tune with the Lord. Seemingly now we equate the two, but that is not the same. It's good for you to be in the house of God, but that doesn't mean that you're, that's where you're at, that's where you need to be spiritually. Just because you attend the house of God doesn't necessarily mean you can say it's well, it's good, all is well. And so we find that this woman was great. And notice what it says, and she constrained him to eat bread. Now, we live in a dangerous day today, and I recognize that. Uh, but if you saw somebody going by your house, would you say, y'all want to eat with us? Now, we have to assume this was Elisha and Gehazi together because Gehazi, it, we're fixing to find out that Gehazi was with him. So, I guess my uh, question to you, you're stable financially, whatever a great woman meant, and I believe she was a great woman spiritually, and she says, do y'all want to eat with us? Took in a traveler she didn't know from Adam, invited him and Gehazi into the house and says, do y'all want to eat with us? Uh, you know who does that? An idiot? A crazy person? No, no. It's an individual that can say it's well. What would have been the worst thing that could have happened to the Shumanite woman? He cut her head off, right? Some crazy yahoo. You know what? She did it serving God, did she not? And so she invites him in, and uh, whomever is with him at that point, and, and, and gives him something to eat. Now, I want you to see that it's not a steak, it's bread. And all through the Word of God, we find again and again and again that bread is what is offered. Uh, we see that's what fell from the sky. Um, the bread called what is it? Or uh, manna. And you know what the thing about bread is? It's enough. It, it, it's a base food, is it not? It's something that will keep you going. And, and so we find that she uh, invites him in, offers some bread. Uh, he takes her up on it. And then this becomes a habit. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned thither to eat bread. Now, uh, you know, that's one of those situations where here the preacher comes again. Now, we all know him in loving, uh, Brother Cecil Fayard. Now, when he pastored at Central Baptist at Marion, a wonderful church, some good, good people up there. Most of the ones I knew have died out, the Coxes. They're, I think Stephen is still there. And uh, they, uh, they uh, said that usually about lunchtime, Brother Fayard would show up. And Layuna used to tell me and Donna, she said, I would always just have extra fix because I knew he was coming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I bet the Shumanite woman just kind of felt that way, that here comes the preacher again. Or, I will say this, that's how most of us would have felt, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't think the Shumanite woman felt that way. 
I think she was excited. I think she was glad to see you. Here he comes. I'm going to fix the best bread that I can come up with. I'm going to spend some time with this man again. Now, we'll see in verse 9, she figures him out finally. But I want you to see she had an interest. She was good. Uh, she wanted to provide for the needs of others with what she did have. And you know, I think we've about convinced ourselves in the modern day that we have to have a lot to provide for the needs of others. And we find that's just not what the scriptures teach. Verse 9, and he said unto, and she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this man, uh, that this is an holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Now, I want you to see two things. First of all, again, this is on a routine basis. He's showing up, the Bible says, continually. And now, in addition to making all that bread, she's ready to give more. Now, I've often wondered, did her husband roll his eyes at her? Because uh, now she's wanting to build him a room onto the house. Or was he receptive as well? We never know much about the man's testimony. But we will say of the Shumanite woman <coughs> that she wanted to do more. Yeah. Do you ever have that, that wonderful closeness to the Lord that you want to do more? That what you're doing now is not satisfying anymore? That what you're doing now, uh, it may be pleasing and nothing's wrong with it, but you would like to dedicate something more to the Lord. I believe that's essential. And even as much as understanding Scripture as the years go by is a natural inborn thrust to do more and more and more for God. And, and so she goes, let's build him a room onto the house, and that way he'll have a good place to come when he gets there. Verse uh, uh, verse 10, let us make. Now, uh, that's, you could tell that she was a woman, because uh, when I come home, Madonna says, I've got something for us to do. You, you know, I'm like, well, what are us doing? <laughs> Because, uh, you know, I, I haven't heard anything about it. She included her husband in the work, and we don't know how excited he was about it, but we do know this, he wasn't resistive to it either. He, he, he was in enough agreement to it, he helped her do it. And, and any time that uh, you as a couple can do something in the service of God, do it, whether it's the man's idea or whether it's the woman's idea, if it's, if it's geared at growing in the Lord, do it. Just, just, just get together and move forward. And so they do that. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. Now, uh, that's kind of like a little lean-to. Uh, it's not in the direct inside or the direct uh, natural structure of the house as we's coming off the hill over there coming to church this morning. Uh, Sarah looked down in the hollow and saw uh, uh, Ben Sr.'s what's left of his house. And we've been talking about building a little house for Sarah. And she kind of made comment about that. She liked how it was shaped. Now, the back two rooms in that house are just lean -ons. The main part of the house was in the front, and then he built whatever two rooms were on the back. I'm assuming a kitchen and maybe another bedroom. And uh, that's the type of place that she built for. Him. Now, all of us know that have been in houses like that, and I've been passing by one on the way to Paris, and they ripped all the back lean tos off, and they're rebuilding the house. Lean tos don't last, but they're something. In other words, you don't have to have the very best, but you can offer something unto Christ. You can walk, you can do something, and you know what? It may be like most lean twos, it may not be strong as the rest of the house, and it may be the first to go, but it's useful for the things of the Lord. And that's what we need to do as the Lord's people in the modern day, is just be useful. Just lend yourself, just give yourself unto the Lord. Now, Notice this is what they did. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, a table, 
a stool, and a candlestick. Now, it was very, very basic. You say, well, that ain't much to give to the preacher. Well, it keeps him dry, gives him a place to sleep, and gives him a place to study, place to sit. See, we need to get past what we can't do and focus on what we can do. And, and that's what she did, and it wasn't no palace, and it wasn't no wonderful thing, but it served its purpose. You know what? If you believe in divine election, and I certainly do, you were saved for a purpose. You weren't saved to gather dust. You weren't saved just to, to sit on a pew somewhere. You were saved with purpose and design by the Almighty, and you will accomplish that purpose. And I believe she yielded herself and did this. Verse 11, and it fell on the day that he came thither, yonder comes the preacher again, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. Now, I can't, but ch can't help but chuckle when I read this because now he's not even knocking on the door. It said that he just turned into the chamber, went right to his place, and laid down. You know what? That's a good thing. It, it may seem comical, but isn't it a wonderful thing that the man of God was that welcome? Mm -hmm. Uh, it, isn't it a wonderful thing that he could kick back from that journey? And you're talking about a man, man, he went through the ringer and even the hazi forsaken eventually. And he went through some rough stuff and still had a room to go to. I think that's remarkable of the woman. I think it's a great testimony of her. And, and so he, he gets in his little room and he kicks back there and he's sitting down or he's laying down, and he said that the Hazi, his servant, called the Shumanite, and when he had called her, she stood before him. Now, I don't know for sure because Simon, the Hazi is the spokesperson here, um, but I don't know if she stood before the Hazi or if she stood before Elisha, or maybe she stood before both of them. It just said that she stood before him. So she came to the door and looked in. Now, most of us, uh, ladies, and y'all the one that has to serve most of the time, and I kind of get it, but uh, do you think she said, well, what does he want now? Mm. I don't believe she did. Mm. I believe she was excited again. Uh, you know what? Maybe he wants cake this time. Maybe he wants to move up scale and have a little piece of meat with it. And I, I bet her wheels got to turn in what she might fix for him because she was a servant. And day by day, she learned to trust more. You know, if it's our mind to learn and our mind to trust, and we do that, it will grow. So here she comes to see what the, the man of God might want with her again. And he said unto her, uh, and, and he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful or caring. Now that's not careful like I'm going to keep my eyes on you. It was careful like caring for them. Right. Being sure that they had what they needed. Be sure that when they went in there, there was some fresh bread available. Being sure that the sheets and the blankets were clean. Uh, caring for them. You know what? Seemingly the Lord's people has about forgot that. Something as simple as that. Keep the building clean. Uh, you know, uh, I know preachers, young preachers, that think they're about too good to do that. And uh, shame on them. I'll say this, they really don't understand service. I remember, and I wasn't it well. I know the Lord was dealing with me about preaching, but I was being a bullhead. But y'all remember the old iron windows that we had at Bumble Smells? And you couldn't see out of them. I always felt like I was trapped in there. I have an issue with not being able to see. And me and Jimmy Oliver took all the caulk out of all six of those big windows and replaced it. Drove all the way from Dresden to get it done. And you know what? It didn't bother me a bit. I was excited about it. 
I think I'll work Jimmy Oliver to death that day. Uh, glad to do it. See, that's where we need to be. And not to brag on me, but when you're young, seeming like your zeal is there. Is that not right? And, and so we see then that this individual, uh, this uh, woman, <laughs> was going to be recognized. He said, what, what do you want? Uh, what can we do for you now? Then uh, notice what his suggestions are. What is, with, uh, what is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king? Now, uh, that's kind of an unusual uh, uh, suggestion, but there's a couple of things I go in, I think go into the background of that. First of all, there was fixing to be a drought on, or there already was a drought on. Remember, he said seven years there shall be no rain. He knew that was coming, or it was already in progress. I think it actually happens in, in chapter seven. But if he had spoken to the king and said, you go easy on the Shumanite woman. Remember, the king was pretty upset when that came that way. You remember that? Um, and maybe just say, you know what? There's a Shumanite woman down there that's really good to me. And you know why that was significant? She was heathen. Shumanites were not Jews. And, and so it would have been a... A, rec a, a thing of recognition. And you know what? It's the nature of the flesh to enjoy recognition, isn't it? it even if it's just that much. Man, Larry's really a good preacher. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. Uh, we ought to be the humblest people there is if we understand our position in Christ. Number one, there'd been no hope without him. And number two, he chose you, you didn't choose him. And, and, and that, that, that is the mystery and the, and the marvel of grace. And so he says, do you want to meet the king? And she answered, I'm well among my own people. In other words, the Shumanites are going to take care of me. Uh, just about all my family's dead, so I'm going to bomb off my wife's family. The pages, they're going to take care of me. That's what she was saying. That's what he was, I mean, she was saying. I'm Shumanite. Shumanite, I don't need anything. <laughs> I feed you, surely I can feed myself, right? And so what that really is about and consistent with trusting the Lord is she didn't want recognition. Uh, she didn't want her name named to the king. She was serving him in silence. She was serving him by faith. She was serving the man of God, and that was enough for her. She didn't want any uh, bells. She didn't want any whistles. She simply wanted to serve the God, uh, the God of the Bible. I dwell among my own people. And he said, what then is it to be done for her and Gehazi answered, not the woman, and Gehazi answered, barely she had no child, and her husband is old. Now, I want you to see that um, he, uh, Gehazi comes up with this idea, well, she needs, a, she needs a son, she needs a child. Now, why is that uh, significant, and why did it specifically say her husband was old? Well, the first thing, he knew chronologically probably the old man was going to die before the Shumanite woman. And where did that leave the Shumanite woman? Especially with no kinfolk. It left her on the mercy of other people. In other words, uh, Gehazi was saying she needs a long-term plan. You know what this morning, you know what my long-term plan is? Trust in the Almighty. That's my long-term plan. It's not Social Security. It's not retirement from the state of Tennessee. It's simply trusting God because you know what? He's never failed me yet. And, and I, I fully believe that he never will. And, and so we see that uh, Gehazi comes up with this idea, not the Shumanite woman. And he 
said, call her. And when he called her, she stood at the door. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, according to the natural uh, length of a pregnancy, thou shalt embrace a son. Now, I want you to see that not only did he say you're going to have a child, he said specifically, you're going to bear a son. He's going to take care of you. This is God's plan. Well, you know, uh, how far do you trust God's plan? That, that's the real question, is it not? How far do you trust God's plan? Because what questions it and what you do after God's plan is questioned is the exact amount that you trust Him. It really is. When all solutions man, mankind can come up with have been exasperated, how much do you trust Him then? That's a, the real measure of your faith. Now we find this old man, and uh, I'm assuming the Shumanite woman was younger than him because her age is not mentioned, just the provision that would be out in the future, again in man's idea. He says, you're going to have a son, a natural born son. Verse 17. Uh, excuse me, let me get the rest of verse 16. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. Now, two things there. First of all, she was wary of it, and she wasn't quite believing him. Right. Remember when the Godhead came down, or whomever it was, as Jared said this morning, and visited Sarah and uh, Abraham, and when, they, uh, when God said to Abraham, you, Sarah will bear a son about this time next year, and it said she laughed. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where uh, the Shumanite woman was at. Uh, going against the possibilities. You know what? The Lord God's going to ask that of you sometime. Is going against the normal. Going against what you trust. Going against what you've done hitherto. And you know what? It shouldn't be scary for us. We should embrace it. Uh, we should be excited about it. If, if that's God's plan for our life, what could be better? What could be more wonderful than following after God's plan for our life? And so, verse 17, And the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. It happened. Fulfilled. Fulfillment of prophecy. And when the child was grown. Now, if you underline in your Bible, I, I'm not sure what grown means here. Uh, maybe y'all can, uh, can shed some light on to me because I feel like grown is 21 years old, somewhere in there. But we'll find that she, he's still sitting on her lap. Now, it looks kind of strange now but Bella still sits on my lap, Gracie still sits on my lap, and it might look like a duck on a June bug, but it's, so I don't know how old she was. I mean, excuse me, how old he was, because it said she, he was grown, and yet in a minute we'll see him sitting on his mama's lap. Now, uh, maybe it means he was weaned. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, at any rate, he's grown now. Years have passed. And you know what? I really believe the longer a blessing is with you, there'll be two things. The greater you'll appreciate it, or you'll no longer count it. And the flesh being what it is, I'd say more times than not, we don't count it anymore. What do you think about that? You go, when you lay your head on the pillow at night, do you go, uh, thank you for the food today. Thank you for this house. Brother Junior and Sister Diane have lived in their house for 53 years. Almost becomes normal, don't it? You have to be careful. You know what? <laughs> at least most of the time, that roof still holds water out, right? You have to be thankful, don't you? And 
I don't know if the Shumanite woman got complacent. Or every time she looked at that little child, she was like, glory to God. I don't know because the Bible doesn't say. But I'm telling you, be very careful over your blessings that you don't become complacent in them. That they don't become a routine thing. And so we're years into this thing now, at least probably four or five years later, because the Jewish baby wasn't even wound. I mean, wasn't even... Uh, uh, they were still nursing at three years old. They weren't weaned until at least three. And now he's out in the field with daddy. Notice uh, verse 18. And the child was grown and it fell on the day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to the lad, Carry him to his mother. Now, that's why I think he must have still been somewhat of a child because he was instructed to carry him. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till, the, till noon and then died. Now, uh, I can't comprehend this, holding a child while it goes. Now, I know a real instance of this when I was a boy uh, all of you remember Don Trawick, who was executive here for many, many years. He, has a, he had a sister named Norma. Now, Norma had a little boy that was born with cystic fibrosis. Uh, he lived four years. And their little home place back home, she was on uh, the swing, holding that baby, swinging back and forth, and then the baby was gone. And she laid the baby on the swing and took off running. And my granddaddy caught her about a half mile away and stopped her. Now, that would have been my reaction or worse. And uh, when he caught me, well, she was just screaming. Uh, and I think the death of a child is a cross to bear that nobody understands until you go there. And it's not, it, it's not to be taken lightly. It's not to be assumed that everything will be all right. Uh, I believe even God the Father grieved and, 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 and was unbelievable upset when Jesus yielded his own life on the cross. David said, my son, my son, Absalom, oh my son, oh my son. That was the reality of losing a child. And so we see the Shumanite woman's reaction, being a godly woman and being centered on the plan of God, what her reaction is. See, when you are centered on the plan of God for your life, the most devastating of all ideas can become part of God's plan. And we, we need to be there. We need to understand and know the most devastating things in our life are still the plan of the Father. Verse uh, 21. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. So again, I still think it's a child because she can pack him. She can pack. Now, until you pack the dead corpse, listen, they don't help you a bit. Uh, I, I, I've done that before. I literally carried bodies out of houses because you couldn't get the stretcher in there. And, and it's a heavy load. And so I think her being a woman and him being a child, she was able to do this. And where did she take him? She took her burden to the man of God. Now, in the modern day, isn't it wonderful we can take our burden to, the God, to, to God ourselves? We don't uh, need a Catholic priest. We don't need a Jewish priest. I go on the merit of the blood of Christ and, and lay all my problems out before God. That, what a privilege. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. And you know what? We don't, need, we don't even recognize it for what it is. I saw on Facebook the other night that there's a Catholic priest that will uh, pray for you if you let him. <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad I don't need him. And, uh, and so we see that she placed him really very trustingly in the man of God. She don't tell anyone. And she, uh, verse 22, and she called upon her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God 
and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go, on, uh, go to him today? Is it neither new moon nor Sabbath? And she said, It shall be well. Now, I want you to see that she picked up on the Jewish culture. I believe, you know, you could become Jewish. Uh, there, there were methods for a Gentile to become Jewish. And I want you to see they got so used to the man of God and so used to respecting the Jewish culture. He says, it's not the Sabbath. How'd they learn of the Sabbath? They learned of the Sabbath and serving God by, uh, by Elisha himself. He said, it's not the new moon. And they had a special Sabbath when the new moon came out. He says, why are you looking for the man of God? Uh, why do you need to talk to him today? And all her answer was, it's well. Now I ask you, what is your most uh, unbelievable ideas this morning? And I'll say unto you, it is well. It, it, it is well. It is well. And it's very thrilling to the inward man to get there. Yeah. But it's hard. Mm. You, I, I don't know if Sarah remembers if I knew she was there. Um, when I found out Judy was dying, I came home and I told Donna everything we heard. And I sat down to eat my supper and I couldn't eat. I started crying. And, and you know, being a man, I didn't want to upset the children. And I went to the laundry room, and that's my retreat. I pulled myself together, and I sat down again, and started crying again. And I said to Donna, I said, I know she's going to die. Now, it was a reality, and it had to be dealt with, but was that really the reaction of a man of God? Now, there was no question except God intervened. She was going to die. I mean, that cancer was everywhere. But it was God's plan. And like the Shumanite woman, would to God have had the ability to say it's well. It's well, it's well. We can rejoice in that, can't we? But that don't happen with a snap of your fingers, and that don't happen just by... Huh, just by everyday routine service. This was a woman of God that, that gave herself time and time and time again to God's plan for her life. She built onto her house. She was obviously, when they said, when Elisha said, call the woman that she was there on duty and wondered what else she might do for him. That's where you get to accepting whatever. That's how you get to saying it's well. And do it with sincerity. Do it with some truth. Do it with some reality. And that's exactly uh, what she did. Verse 24. And she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive me and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So go in a hurry. And so she went and came unto the man of God in Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when... The man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is the Shumanite. Run, I now pray thee to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, It is well. What an amazing thing. Now, if you know the rest of these scriptures, she ran toward uh, Elisha, and Gehazi tackled her and knocked her down. Man, that's somebody that wants to get, wants to get close to God, isn't it? And if you know the rest of that, she got away from Gehazi and grabbed Elisha's feet and begged. She said, I didn't even want a son, and now he's dead. Now the rest of the story, through God, Elisha solved the problem. And, but I really believe, had he died or lived, the Shumanite woman would have said, it's well. It's well. It's good. Everything's okay. You know, that's so praiseworthy. And, and we run right through it and never think a thing about it. But we need to be, we need to be the people that say it's well. 
you know, we're down to what? 10 people, 15 people coming, seven, eight members. You know what? It's well. It's good. Where two or three are together, together in my name, there will I be in the midst. It's Amen. good. Amen. It, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, we need to get back to <laughs> saying whatever God's plan for my life, it's well. It's good. Amen. 